Last week we called a, we started a, a service called the Shallows or just Shallows, and uh, I don't know how long we'll be talking about it. I will try to bring everybody up to speed just in case you weren't here last week. But uh, it's kind of what we were talking about just a minute ago. I feel like sometimes we get in this relationship with Jesus and we just stay in the shallows. And we looked at Scripture last week to where He doesn't want us to stay in the shallows. He's called us out into the deep. Some will say the deep. And uh, I understand if you're like me, sometimes going out of the deep can make us anxious. I don't like, uh, anybody in here an ocean person? Raise your hand if you're an ocean person. A few of us. Um, I don't like the ocean that much, and I really don't like the ocean if I can't see land. That just is very unsettling to me, and uh, there's deep stuff out there, and there's stuff that lives in the deep, and they're making babies and going to the bathroom and doing weird stuff, and so the whole concept of the deep part of the oceans freaks me out, and I googled um, uh, sea creatures, I guess, or whatever you would call them, fish that live in the deep, and I encourage you to do it. It is one of the most scary, gross, awkward-looking fish out there. It's called an anglerfish. It has a little light over him, and then little baby fish or drawn to the light, and then he eats them. And my whole point in saying all of that is sometimes going out into the deep can be scary, and I feel like we are that way when it comes to getting outside of ourselves when it comes to worshiping God. What keeps us from going deeper, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We know in the book of Psalms it says that deep calls out to deep. There's something on the inside of you that calls out to God that longs for more of him. And the best way I can describe it is if you've ever had a really good meal, whatever it is, tacos or enchiladas or a cheeseburger or just a really good meal, and you finish it and you're like, man, I could really have more of that. That's basically me with every meal. I'm not going to even lie. But if you've ever had something, you're like, that was so good. I just want another one. But that's the way God is. It's like we get this little taste of him, and just a little taste is not good enough. I just need one. And we need more. And so there's something in us that desires more. Someone say more. But if we're going to have more of God, we have to understand that it's up to us to have more of God. He's made himself completely available and he wants to give us more, but we have to decide that we want more. And so tonight I want to talk about what keeps us in the shallows. So y'all ready? Number one, what keeps us in the shallows is dead things keep us in the shallows. Dead things keep us in the shallows. What do I mean by that? Well, listen to the scripture. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 out of the Baron Study Bible says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all has come new. So this is the way it works. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, because when you, got bo- when you were born into this earth and you came out as a baby, you were born with what we call a sin nature. What is a sin nature? It's the nature that was given to you by Adam, which is our father, all of our father. We all came from Adam and Eve. And when we're born into this world, we were given a nature. It's called a sin nature. But when we receive Jesus Christ, this scripture takes place in our life. He replaces our sin nature or Adam's nature with his new nature. And then he says all the old things have been passed away. Behold, all things are made new. Someone say, I'm brand new. And there's nothing like it. You're brand new. But you have to understand, when you give your life to Jesus, you're made a new creature. The old is gone. It's dead. It no longer lives. But what happens is we try to drag it along with us. We try to stay attached to this dead thing, our old nature, and that old nature lives in the shallows. <laughs> he loves it in the shallows. He never wants to commit fully to God as to where your new nature is like, yay, I love Jesus, let's go after it. Let's get as much Jesus as we can. If you're going to get as much Jesus as you can handle, you're going to have to leave your old nature behind. Now, over in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 out of the NIV, it says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken a hold of it, but this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Now, I know a lot of you in this room, we've been around each other for a long time. It's good to see some new faces, some old new faces, and then just some old, old faces. But I know a lot of you in this room, you run track. You run like the 200, the 300, you run the relays, you run the 500, you do hurdles. I was never really good at hurdles. I wasn't tall enough to jump them, so I tripped over all sorts of them. But I do know this about track. It's really hard to stay in your lane if you're looking backwards, right? And one of the first things, I did have a track coach because I went to state. I was a little fast guy, but one thing my track coach, he taught me two things. Number one is he said your knees go as high as your arms, so if you want to run fast, really get your arm up and your legs will follow, right? Anybody been taught that running track before? No? And then he also said you can't look at the people running next to you. 
He said, you just focus on what you're doing because if you look back at them, it's going to slow you down, right? And this is what the Apostle Paul explains to us. He says, listen, I used to live in the shallows. When I was uh, rebelling against Jesus, when I was going out there and I was persecuting Christians, I wasn't running the race that God had for me. But when I got born again and received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I had to forget all the old things. And this is what God's telling you tonight. If you want to go deeper in him, you have to forget all the old things. Anybody in here made a mistake? To go deeper in God, you got to forget about it. Right? You'll never go deeper in God if you hold on to your mistakes. The Bible says he throws our sin as far as the east is from the west and he remembers it no more. You remember more about your sin than God does. You remember more about your mistake than God does. But tonight, God is telling you, listen, I know you're human and you made some mistakes. I need you to forget about your mistakes. Forget about the old life. Forget about the dead weight. Let go of it and move on. Someone say, I'm going deeper. deeper. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, he says this. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. I no longer live. What is he saying? Some things died. And you know what died is what I wanted to do what I wanted to say, how I wanted to live. I no longer live, yet Christ lives in me. I now live in the body. I live in faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 5.24 says, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and its passions and its desires. So what are we saying? In order to go deeper in God, something had to die, and you can't hold on to it and expect to go out here. And I know this is kind of like, Christianese, we use that word sometimes when we talk about Christian verbiage, but you have to understand that uh, you have a flesh, and what your flesh is is every single one of us have things that we enjoy to do that don't line up with what God has asked us to do. Let me give you a real example. If someone mistreats you at school, your flesh wants to yell at them. If a teacher gives you a bad grade, your flesh wants to yell at them or rebel. If somebody does something mean to you at school, maybe they, they push you or they trip you, or I don't even know what people do. Uh, I remember what they used to do to us in high school. But when somebody does something, your flesh, the old nature, the dead part of you wants to retaliate. So what is that? That is your flesh. But what does the spirit want to do? What's the spirit? That's your new nature. That's God's nature living on the inside of you. Well, the Bible says when someone mistreats you, turn the other cheek and go on your way. Right? It says never return anger for anger, but instead return love for anger. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so we understand that God's asked us to do these things. And so I'm trying to paint a picture, a contrast between your sin nature and your new nature. A lot of people want to go deeper in God, but they're still holding on to who they used to be. You need to let go. Someone say, I'm letting go. Come on. Say, I'm letting go. Listen, you have a new passion and you have a new desire because God made you new. Over in Romans 6, 6, it says, We know that our old sinful selves have been crucified with Christ so that sin may lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. So he's saying, nothing's holding you back. The only thing holding back is you. But I broke all these ties. You can go deeper if I want. I like to look at it this way, guys. I worship God differently now than I used to. Why? Because I'm not the same anymore. I used to go to church. A lot of you don't know my life and my history, but my dad's been a a pastor of a church in Colorado, a very small town up in the mountains of Colorado. He's been a pastor there since 1982. I was born in church, and I lived in church, and because my parents had a church, you know, I was around it for a long time. But now that I've grown up and I'm my own person, I worship differently now than I did when I was in their church. And the reason I worship differently now is because I was going to church just to go to church, but now I want more. I was going to church to go to church because my parents were the pastors of the church. I didn't have a choice. So I just went to go. And that's fine if we start there. But at some point, you have to say, you know what? There's more to this. And I want more. And that's a choice you have to make. I made a decision. I want more. And since I want more, that decision provoked me to worship differently than I used to. I get involved like I used to not get involved. I lift my hands. Well, what is that? That's an act of surrender. That's an act of saying, you know what? I'm going to commit myself to you again in worship. I jump when the song's upbeat. I clap, or at least I try to. I try to stay with Michael or Jimmy, who was playing the drums. I clap. What am I saying? I get involved in worship now as to where I used to just stand there and watch. What's the difference? I want more. 
But it wasn't a decision that Pastor Bruce or Pastor Mary Ann could make for their son Robert. It was something that Robert had to decide. It won't say, I want more. I believe that you do. And when you do, you will worship different. So real quick, just for the next five minutes or so, I want to talk about just, a, we got, I got four things that I want to look at. We're not going to look at all four tonight. We're going to do two tonight and two next week. Four things that keeps us from worshiping God different when we're at church with our friends and with our family. Four things. Number one is fear. You'll never step out and worship God if you're afraid. And there's a lot of things that we're scared of. Lots of times we're scared of, what are people going to think? I know sometimes I've been scared of, what do I look like right now? <laughs> I have my hands lifted up, <laughs> you know, just got done playing basketball. Do I stink? Don't I stink? You know, someone's standing next to me. What are they smelling? What's happening? I mean, I have all these thoughts going through my head. Did I put on enough armpit deodorant? I, I mean, we just have thoughts. And those thoughts, the negative thoughts, produce fear. And what fear does is it keeps us from stepping out. There's a reason why Robert doesn't swim out into the deep parts of the ocean. I'm afraid. <laughs> And I know we're not supposed to be afraid. Well, lots of times as Christians we say fear is a bad word. But there's certain things you can be afraid of, right? I'm afraid of the ocean by myself out there. I'm not going to. There's a movie. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's called like The Deep Blue or something. It's about a couple of people that fall off a cruise ship or something and they're stranded out to sea. I will never watch that movie. That is like my nightmare, you know. I'm not going to watch that. It's just horrifying. And since I'm afraid of the deep ocean, since I'm afraid, I remember. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to get somewhere. But I remember the first time, the only time I went on a cruise. I was here at the church, and they had a uh, conference that they were sending us to. So they told Rachel and I, the whole staff is going on this cruise. You don't have a choice. You have to go. And I was horrified because when you get out there in deep waters and you can't see land, it's like high anxiety for Robert. So for like the first couple hours, I hid inside the ship. <laughs> I was like, I know we're leaving land, but I don't want to see it. I don't want to acknowledge it. And I did my best that whole trip to try to stay like, you know, as busy and occupied as I could. And every once in a while, I got real brave and I like looked at the little railing and I was like, I'm not going to walk over it because what if someone pushes me over? I mean, you just have these weird thoughts. And so, but it was absolutely horrifying being in the middle of the ocean on a cruise ship, not being able to see land. Because I start thinking about like Titanic, even though I'm in the freaking tropics, there's no icebergs. But you know, I mean, what if there's pirates? I don't know what's out here, you know what I mean? This is uncharted waters for Robert. It's international territory, so people can do whatever they want. They're doing, I mean, it scared me, it horrified me. And the point is, is the whole time I was very like restricted and conservative in how I behaved on that ship because I was afraid. If we're not careful, we get the same way in church. We get like very safe, very constricted, very afraid when God wants us to be free. The Bible says this, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. So he doesn't want us like this when we're worshiping. He wants us just wide open. All that you have, God. And that's a decision that we have to make. When we're afraid, it really keeps us from taking the next step. And so I had this idea. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Um, I don't know if that'll stay. Yeah, it'll stay. So I need a volunteer. Um, yeah, Landon, I saw your hand shoot up first, so come on, Lando. <clears throat> Bro, I hope this stays. Just go ahead and stand right here, and then get up here. Michael, if you'll come up here, too. I want you to hold this chair so he doesn't die. Get up on the chair. Stand. All right, are you good? Now, Michael, before you come up here, put that chair kind of in front of him. All right, now stand back here and hold the back of that so he doesn't fall. Can you see anything? Oh, no, you can't see anything. All right, <clears throat> I put a chair, actually I didn't, Michael did it. There's a chair out here. Let me just describe to you, it's about one, two, three, four, five feet away from you. <clears throat> Can you see anything, bro? Don't be looking, don't be peeking. Get out of here. All right, so this is what I want you to do. I want you to jump from the chair that you're standing on to the chair. I promise you, I moved it five feet. Everyone, is the chair five feet in front of him? Yes. Yeah, come on. Is the chair five feet in front of him? Yes. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It's a little lower than you are. It's not on your level. It's kind of down there. But you can trust me. <laughs> I want you to jump 
from the chair that you're on. And when I was praying about this today and studying, I was really kind of hoping you wouldn't do it because I don't know what's going to happen if you do do it. <laughs> so, uh, but there's a chair five feet in front of you. Um, you don't have to jump to it, but I would like for you to jump to that chair. <laughs> Raina's like, death, yeah! <laughs> um, just, just real quick, though, real quick, because we, we got to move on. I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, do you want to jump from the chair you're standing on to the chair that's in front of you? Uh, what if it falls? <laughs> well, that's not really what I asked. I asked, do you want to jump to the chair that's in front of you? <laughs> uh, I mean, as long as I don't get hurt. As long as I don't get hurt, you're down for it. All right, what is stopping you from jumping to the chair that's in front of you? The fear. (laughs) You're really helping me out here, bro. I appreciate you setting me up like that. Thank you so much. But what's stopping him, and I don't know if he understood where I was going, but it really was a beautiful setup. Whether you guys, and you guys can come stand here, and I can put the blindfold on you. The truth of the matter is, is not knowing what's out there, not being able to see it, kind of is producing some anxiety low-key on the inside of Landon that is keeping him pretty stationary on this chair. Even though there is a chair out there that I've placed, he can't see it, but it's out there, and the reason he's not jumping, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. (laughs) The reason he's not jumping is because he's low-key scared. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Okay, maybe not even low-key, like high-key. Like, what if I miss the chair? What if I break my leg? What if I break my face? You know, you got to protect the moneymaker, you know what I mean? What if I break my nose? And so all that stuff. So let's just take this off. Now you can go ahead and get down and then step on out. And that's fantastic. So thank you. That's all I needed. Thanks, Michael. You're you're a good supportive role, man. I appreciate it. So what is that really goofy? Now, how many of you wanted him to jump, honestly? (laughs) I kind of want him to. Can we film it and put it on YouTube? Because, I mean, that'd be great. All right. So what's the point? Uh, It's real simple. When we're afraid... We don't move. When we're scared, I did this once in the youth group. Ashley was actually there, I think. It was a long time ago. I had Matt and Wayne with some paint guns coming from the back with some ski mask on, and they started shooting guns, and everybody got really, really afraid, and when they got really, really afraid, they didn't move. Listen, when it comes to worshiping God and going deeper, if you're afraid, you're going to stay right here. You'll never lift your hands if you're afraid of what your friends are going to think of you. You'll never sing with the band if you're afraid of what you sound like. You'll never clap if you're afraid. And this is what I'm trying to get to you guys. Why are we talking about this? Because God needs you to go deeper. He has some things for you. And let me tell you, there's some things that are coming on the horizon. And the reason I know it is because the Spirit of God has told me, but also it's written in his word. Everything we went through over the last 18 months to 24 months is just the beginning, guys. We're in the end time. Stuff is going to get even more crazy than it was the last year and a half. How do we get through that? We get through that because we have God. And the deeper you go in God, the easier it is to get through. If I could be real honest with you, I don't know how anybody got through the last 18 months without God. There's a reason why I study a lot and I read statistics. There's a reason why suicide rates over the last 18 months shot through the roof. Why? Because it was a hard couple years and a lot of people didn't have God and they saw no way out, so they took the most awful way out. Now listen, if there's anybody in here and you've ever contemplated suicide, listen to me. Don't ever think about that because you have one that is for you. Who loves you, who gave you everything. And if you will go deeper in him, all these things that used to plague you in the shallows can't. That's my next point. Uh, We'll get to it here in just a second. But you have to understand is things that live in the shallows can't live in the deep. Things that live in the shallows, they can't live in the deep. See, you can put me in shallow water, and I'm going to be fine. I can even go underwater. (laughs) We were at the beach one time, and I had goggles on. It was the last time I did it. I got chased out by a crab. And he was just a little guy, and he's like, and I'm like, "Ah!" I'm running out of the water. And Rachel's like, what is happening? It's a crab the size of like a dollar. I mean, it was just a little guy, but he scared me right out of there. Did you know if you're going to go out into the ocean and you're going to go into deep waters, there's special equipment that you need so you don't explode? Not exaggerating. 
There's so much pressure. They have to put you in this capsule. It's a sealed capsule that, that allows you to go down there without the pressure of it causing you to explode. What am I saying? Certain things live in the shallows that can't live in the deep. And so God wants us to go deeper in him so these things, these negative thoughts and these struggles and these battles we've been having that have been living on us in the shallows, we get out there in the deep of God and he just cuts them all off of our life. Fear, anxiety, worry, concern. We get out in the deep of God, he replaces it with peace and understanding and clarity of mind. He's just a good God. Someone say, I'm going deeper. And so Joshua chapter one, verses one through nine, I don't have time to read it, but I'll just read verse nine to you guys because I spent a long time gabbing like I usually do. Amen. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate the support. Janice, where is, it? where is Joshua? It's somewhere in here. Do you guys ever have to go to the front of the Bible to find where you're looking for? Yeah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Joshua, Judges. There it is. Joshua chapter 1. Now, i got to paint a picture real quick so you guys have understanding. What happened here, what happened, Genesis... There it is, Joshua. Okay, so uh, the Israelites had this leader. His name was Moses. God said, I've called you out of Egypt, and I've called you to the promised land. They get out there. They make a bunch of mistakes, and since they make a bunch of mistakes, they can't go into the promised land, and uh, Moses dies, and then Joshua, who's Moses' assistant, it's his time to step up. And God says uh, in verses 1 through 9, I don't have time to read all of it, but God says the promised land that I promised to Moses, you will now lead the people out to. And so what is God saying? I'm taking you somewhere you've never been before. You're about to go deeper. You're about to go into uncharted waters. And then look at what he says to Joshua in verse 9 is so interesting. He says this, I command you to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. And so God tells Joshua, Moses, who was a superior leader, who knew me, who do, did miracles, did all these crazy things, was not able to lead these people into the deeper, was not able to lead them in the promised land. But now it's your turn, buddy. I need you to step up and go out deeper. Someone say deeper. And then notice after he gives him that, all the way at verses 1 through 8, the very next thing he says is he says, do not be afraid. Amen. Why did God tell him that? He told him that because he knew if Joshua was afraid, he would never go out into the deeper waters. Two more scriptures for you guys. I guess we're just going to get to one tonight. We'll get to the next one next week. 2 Timothy 1.7. You guys know this scripture. It's my kid's memory verse for the week that they're learning in school. 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but power, love, and self-discipline. He has not given you a spirit of fear or timidity. What does that mean? Well, the Apostle Paul said it this way, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not going to be timid with what I believe. I'm not going to be timid to demonstrate my belief to the people around me. I'm not going to be timid as I worship God, but instead, I'm going to go deeper. David, if you come down, it'd be awesome. John 14, 27. He said, peace I live, leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives it. Now listen to this, guys. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. <clears throat> Someone in the room needs you to listen to me for the next 30 to 60 seconds. This is important. There's been times where your heart has been so troubled. Your heart has been so troubled. I've got the answer for you tonight. His name is Jesus. He said, my peace, I leave with you. But in order to find the true peace of God, in order to get everything he has for you, you've got to leave the shallows and get into the deeps. As you get into the depths of God, you'll experience his peace like you never imagined you can experience it. You'll experience his love, his acceptance. <laughs> and then you won't be afraid to display it. I say this all the time. I'm gonna make it a shirt, I guess. It wouldn't really be that cool of a shirt. But I say Jesus is the cure for the insecure. What does that mean? When I got lost in Jesus, I stopped caring what everybody else thought. All my insecurities, they just started going away. Why? Because the Bible says this, those who lose their life for me, find it. Those who lose their life for me, 
find it. But then it says, but those who try to hold on to their lives, they lose it. If you would, just close your eyes real quick. No one looking around. Guys, now is not the time to hold back. Whether you've ever had this relationship with Jesus or not, I'm encouraging you to come into a new season of growth with him. I'm encouraging you to take a step. And this is what he's asking us as a youth ministry. And maybe you don't understand this, maybe you do. But our whole youth ministry has been right here on this chair where Landon was standing. We've been right here. And just like that chair I put five feet out in front of Landon, God's out there and he's got something for us. He's got a new place for us to go. But in order to get there, we gotta go together. And in order for us to go together, that means all of us have to push in and make up our mind that we're gonna go deeper with God. We gotta let go of the fear, we gotta let go of the dead things. Tonight, I'm gonna challenge you. Make a decision to leave some things behind. 